What's up guys, this is going to be an in-depth tutorial on how to use Voice Meter Banana. I struggled to learn how to use this program, and I had to watch about 10 different YouTube videos before it finally clicked. The things that I know now, if they would have been explained to me at the beginning, would have made this entire process much easier. By the time we're done with this, you'll be able to set up all of these programs exactly how you want, from XSplit to OBS to Discord or Skype to getting certain audio to your Twitch stream versus your headphones. You'll be able to do all of it, and it's going to be a lot easier than it might seem. Remember that you can pause between each of these steps. I'm going to try to make them short and sweet. Step 1. Download and install Voice Meter Banana. Step 2. Download and install Virtual Audio Cable. There's a link in the description as well. It's right on the Voice Meter website. Step 3. Before we can make changes to Voice Meter Banana settings, we need to make sure that Windows is properly set its playback device for Voice Meter Banana. Find your speaker icon in the bottom menu for these icons, right click it, click on audio devices, and then at the top of the sound menu, you're going to see playback, recording, sounds, and communications. Select playback. You'll notice that my current headset is set as our default, default audio device. Scroll down and change this to voice meter input. Click on it, click set defaults. You'll notice it gets the green check mark. Hit OK. You can now close that down. Step 4. The first thing that we want to do is select our microphone. Under Hardware Input 1, click on Select Input Device. This is going to bring up a list of pieces of hardware available on your computer. You'll notice you'll see repeats. WDM, KS, and MME all represent the same devices, just different drivers that you can use for the same devices. In our case, because it's guaranteed to work, we're going to choose either WDM or MME. The difference between the two of them is that one is known to have a lot lower latency levels than the other. You'll experience less lag with WDM than you will with MME. However, if you notice any crackling or any issues, popping sounds, switch to the other driver and that usually fixes the problem. We're going to select in our case WDM because it is a better and more fast option for our microphone. Your microphone will appear as a different name than mine. I'm using a Focusrite preamplifier with a microphone hooked to it. We're going to select Focusrite USB. However, your microphone is going to be the name of whatever microphone you're using. If it's a USB microphone, it's likely to show up right in this list. If it's hooked to an amplifier or a sound card or anything else, then it's very likely going to show up as the name of that device. I'm assuming that you know which one of these represents your microphone, so click on the one that does, start with WDM first if it's available, if not, choose MME. Step 5. We now need to tell Voice Meter Banana where to send our audio so that we ourselves can listen to it. We are going to select our first hardware out. Under A1, locate the device that you use to listen to audio, in our case it's a headset. Use the driver that matches the previous driver you used for the microphone. In our case, we use WDM for our microphone, so we're going to select our WDM version of our headset, Earphone HyperX 7.1. In your case, it could be desktop speakers, it could be a headset, or it could be some other type of device. Whichever one you're selecting, it's going to be the one that you previously used in playback for Windows. Step 6. Now that we have our microphone and our headset hooked up and our microphone can record, we now need to understand a little bit more about the buttons you see in each of these inputs and what they do. You'll notice at the top we have A1, A2, and A3, and you'll see an A1, an A2, and an A3 in each of these different sections. For right now, we're going to turn everything off, and that way when I show you what each one does, you'll know exactly how they're associated. Currently, if we were to try to go watch anything on YouTube, for instance, like this random video by PewDiePie, I can't hear anything in my headphones. And you at watching at home, wherever you have your audio routed to, you also could not hear this video currently with all of this deselected. So, 
how do we get our headphones hooked to this YouTube video? Well, which one of these inputs is YouTube coming through? It's coming through this one right here. Notice that we have voice meter VAIO and voice meter auxiliary. If you remember back when we set our playback device earlier, we set it for voice meter input. We also have the other option to set it for auxiliary. So as A1 and A2 and A3 correspond to A1, A2 and A3, B1 and B2 correspond to B1 and B2. So you'll notice that this, because it's set as the default audio device in Windows, is responsible for catching all of the audio from Windows. That would include a YouTube video, the audio from a game if it was running, or any system sounds, anything that can play through Windows, which is essentially, at this point, everything. All we have to do to get our sound hooked to our headphones again is to tell B1, which is currently capturing YouTube, to send the audio to our headphones. You might have guessed it. All we have to do is click A1, and then suddenly, I can hear PewDiePie. If I didn't have a YouTube video on, and I had a game playing, the same thing would be true. I would turn A1 on, and then it would go to my headphones. I do have a secondary set of speakers, and although you might not at home, I'm going to demonstrate this to you to give you an idea of better how this works. I'm going to click A2, and I'm going to select my desktop speakers. I have my headphones in A1 and my desktop speakers in A2. So now, if I was to send the Windows audio to my headphones by clicking A1, I could also send it to my speakers by clicking A2. Now if I go back to YouTube and play that PewDiePie video, the audio is going to be coming through my headphones as well as coming through the speakers on my desktop. If I turn off A1, it is now only coming through the speakers on my desktop, and you can probably hear that being picked up through my microphone. Notice that if I turn A2 back off, the video is still playing, B1 is still picking up the audio from Windows, the video on YouTube is still playing, but I just can't hear the thing. This works for all of these inputs. For instance, hardware input 1 can be sent to my speakers or to the headphones or in our case we are going to send hardware input one over to b1 that way it can be mixed with the audio from windows from the games and from anything else we have and sent as one audio stream directly to our recording software obs or xsplit so here we go i'm going to send it over to b1 I'm also going to send it over to B2. Remember, this is B1 and this is B2. They are identical. They are copies of each other. The reason that there's two is to give us more control. B1 can be used to manage our headphones and the audio that we hear locally. And then B2 can be connected to OBS or XSplit and a different set of audio and a different set of circumstances for the audio can be sent to your recording or more importantly out to your stream on XSplit or OBS. Step 7. Now we just need to add Discord to the mix so that your Discord chat can be routed directly to your headphones or to your stream or both in the way that you would like so that your setup is complete. This is where we're gonna use the virtual audio cable that we installed earlier. We're going to set up Discord under Hardware Input 2. Hit Select Input Device and select Cable Output. Notice that we're choosing the Cable Output option that also matches our Microphone Cable Output option under WDM. Next, open up Skype or Discord or whatever other chat program that you use, the setup for each of these is going to be very similar. Now navigate to the section of Discord with user settings. Find the section that says voice and look for your input device. Set your input device to the same device that you set under 
hardware input one. In our case, it's the Focusrite USB preamplifier. Now we set the output device to match hardware input two. Voice Meter Banana is looking for this new source of audio and it's going to think that Discord is an actual piece of hardware. In reality, it's just a piece of software, but the computer doesn't know any better. Setting output device to cable input allows us to send any of the audio from Discord directly into Voice Meter where it then can be mixed into the stream and then sent out either to XSplit and OBS for your live streams or recordings or specifically just sent out to your headphones. Now we just need to tell Voice Meter Banana what to do with the Discord audio. In this case, I'd like to have it in my headphones but not going out to my stream and that will be how I'll show you to set it up in a second. What we're going to do is come to Hardware Input 2 and we're going to select A1. A1 is our headphones. Anything that's set in Discord is going to come into here and go directly to our headphones for us to hear, but our stream will be unable to. If you wanted the stream to hear it, what you could do is select B2, which would take this audio, send it over to B2, which was what our OBS and XSplit will be connected to, and then the entire thing will be mixed in. Step eight. Lastly, I'm going to open up OBS and take a look at the settings to show you how to connect these two together. The same will be similar for XSplit. Go to the settings button inside of OBS, open up the audio section. You'll notice we have five audio inputs. Disable all of them. Because the audio is coming through on a single stream and recorded by the microphone, we will set the primary microphone device to the auxiliary output B2 in Voice Meter Banana and not Voice Meter Output by mistake. Hit Apply and then hit OK. Now you'll notice that in OBS, as we're talking, the microphone is coming from here, going all the way over to Voice Meter Aux, mixing with the audio from the desktop in the game and then is being sent out all the way to OBS where it's now being picked up right here. When you change the volume level here, you're not just changing the volume level of the microphone in OBS, you're changing the volume level of the entire thing. When it comes time to adjust how loud each thing is, you do it individually using these meters. I would suggest to have your microphone always down about one decibel just so it's not at max. Set your Discord appropriately, you'll have to do some testing, as well as the desktop and game audio. Keep in mind, inside of the game, you're able to change the volume of the music, so you can always do it there. You can change the volume of the sound effects. What you're gonna likely do is do some local recordings, see how everything sounds, adjust, tinker with it till you have it how you like it, Maybe even have some friends come into your Discord channel and talk so you can get that mixed in as well or see how loud that is in your headphones. Get everything set up and then once it's how to your liking, you can go live, do a little bit more tweaking from there and then that's pretty much it. When it comes to getting this to work with XSplit, the process is almost identical. Open up XSplit, open audio settings button, set system sounds to none, that way it isn't picking up the same audio stream twice. Set your microphone to the same exact thing, voice meter auxiliary, hit apply, hit OK. And now we have an identical setup. To go over it one last time before we end this video, and hopefully this has made you guys understand this a little bit more, whatever you have set here is what you're gonna be listening to physically where you're at, speakers, headphones. Our microphone is set here. Our microphone can be sent to our headphones if we want, or it's sent directly to our auxiliary or our virtual inputs, B1 and B2. Our Discord can be sent to our headphones, turned on and off right here, or sent to our stream, turned on and off right here. This can be adjusted for volume without actually affecting the in-game volume in OBS or XSplit just inside of our headphones. These volume controls allow you to independently adjust volume also without affecting the stream that you're sending out. 
Lastly, if you ever mess with one of these bars and you want to get it exactly back to zero, double clicking it will get it precisely back to zero. Play around with this a little bit more. The possibilities to add other things to this are pretty much limitless. You're able to add in compression and a noise gate using these dials on your microphone. You're even able to change how your microphone behaves and sounds with echo, lower or higher effects. And again, double click here to get it specifically back to its starting points. Hopefully this made this a little bit easier for you guys. This turned out to be kind of a long video, but I think if you watch the entire thing from start to finish, you'll have a pretty good idea of how this works. And when it comes time to add in new things, such as YouTube or Spotify, you won't have a hard time figuring it out. Thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up and a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time.